Hello, I'm Wes Turnbull, and welcome to Freemasons The Inside Story. In this episode, Gabrielle Foreman catches up with Benedict Scholarship recipient Kelly Trenery, and Jim Spreadbury is back with another treasure in From the Archives. Times that Freemason is asked, what is Freemasonry and what is it that Freemasons do? At its simplest, Freemasonry is a worldwide organization of men who seek to become better people through maintaining certain standards of behavior, showing kindness, fairness, and honesty. Freemasons support each other in these pursuits. Freemasons believe that family is of the highest importance, with occupational or business responsibilities running a close second and everything else coming in third, including Freemasonry. The foundations of Freemasonry are based on six elements, ceremonial, social, spiritual, mystical, intellectual, and benevolent. Ceremonial is used to teach moral virtues and helps members remember the ideals that Freemasons strive for. It is used to mark occasions, such as when the offices of each lodge change over at the beginning of the new year. The so-called secrets of Freemasonry are largely ceremonial, and the promises not to disclose them are to a large extent a measure of integrity. In other words, Freemasons believe promises are really made with the intention that they won't be broken. Freemasonry is an organisation about people. Personal relationships are the glue that holds it together. Thus, social contact is vital in creating and building those relationships. Many lifelong friendships have been established through Freemasonry. Family is recognised as being extremely important for Freemasons. Thus, many social activities are specifically designed for wives, partners, children and our friends. Many Freemasons remember the activities they are involved in as children and often attribute those memories to their desire to join. Freemasonry gives opportunity for people of all ages, backgrounds, cultures and religions completely free association with each other in a setting where everyone is equal. Any member could find himself having dinner with people he might not otherwise have met. The spiritual element of Freemasonry is rooted deep in its foundation, with every Freemason required to believe in a supreme being. The relationship between a Freemason and his God is strictly private. Other than confirming that a man believes in a supreme being, no further questions are asked. Such a belief provides the individual with their own authority for the moral and ethical basis on which Freemasonry rests. Freemasonry is not a religion, nor is it a substitute religion. And religion is a topic Freemasons avoid discussing simply because it is a very private matter and open to differing interpretations. Freemasonry is shrouded in mysticism, symbols and legends. Freemasons make use of these symbols in teachings and in ceremonies that represent ideals in terms of human nature, personal standards, and how they should treat each other. These teachings are passed on by examples designed to reveal the attitudes and behavior that Freemasons strive for. So when someone says that they are leveling with you, they are not talking about how they are using tools or anything to do with construction. They are being honest and direct, which is a mystical meaning given by Freemasons. intellectual element deals with Freemasons history and what it means. For those who discover they have an interest in studying Freemasonry, it can grow into a lifelong interest and in many cases becomes a passion. Most Freemasons understand that 
Similar to most things in life, the more you put into it, the more you will get out of it. This carries a strong provisio, and that is the time spent in Freemasonry must not impact on family lives, private lives, or working lives. Benevolence is the modern word for kindness or generosity, different from charity. Freemasonry is a benevolent organisation which practices kindness and generosity and this may include donations to charities or to individuals as the case may be. Freemasons support a range of projects and have an entire section that, among other things, delivers assistance to people in the form of manpower or other resources. For example, Assistance is often given in the form of clean-up and repairs after bushfires or floods. Freemasonry is an individual's journey, and so each member may have his own specific views or interpretations of what Freemasonry is and means to him. These six elements, however, are the core foundations for Freemasons around the world. Hi, I'm Jim Spreadborough and welcome to From the Archives. You may recall in early editions we had some, a banner, a particular banner that was shown at our original Instagram installation in 1889. And that banner was the one that led all the Freemasons out of the Melbourne Town Hall when we were consecrated back in 1889. Over the year many of our lodges have got their own private banner belonging to the lodge. Now around this library, we have them on the wall. A lot of those banners are unique to them, to the lodge concerned. They tell a bit of the history. They show a little bit about the, the social aspects of the lodge and the year that they had. And they're quite a, quite a beautiful array of banners. We've only got a couple of dozen here, but there are many more out in our, in our lodges around Victoria. Just beautiful parts of the history relating to the Lodge and relating to Freemasonry Victoria. From the Archives, Jim Spreadborough. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Foreman and with me today is Kelly Trenery, a 2013 Benedict Scholarship recipient. Hi Kelly, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Kelly, tell us a little bit about your music career so far. My love for music started right when I was little and as I worked my way through high school and going through all the orchestras and choirs, it became more prominent to me that I wanted to be a music teacher. I always wanted to teach, but it wasn't until the very end of Year 12 when I decided I wanted to be a music teacher. Um, after Year 12, I got into my first preference course, a Bachelor of Music at NMIT Fairfield. And from there, I've been able to completely open my mind to different kinds of music and new ways of even creating music and everything that I could have hoped for. So that course has been amazing. I also do a lot of musical theatre outside of uni and I used to do it outside of school, I used to perform and I've been lucky enough to be offered a few times, I'm doing my third show at the moment, um, to musically direct kids shows with catchment players of Darabin and they've been absolutely amazing and I've been involved with them since I was 15 so it's just great to be that next step up and for them to be giving me opportunities. Great and so how has the Freemasons Victoria Benedict Scholarship enabled you to continue with your career? It's been an absolutely massive help. I was actually able to take part in an ESTEL course. Um, ESTEL is a, I guess it's sort of like a vocal tool that um, it's not necessarily for singers, it can be from any, for anyone who uses their voice and the whole point of it is teaching you about the anatomy of your voice so that you can take, learn about all the different ingredients and put them all together to create different recipes and the course was quite expensive and it was over five days um, and I was able to do that which is really my singing has moved forward so much in the last six months and it definitely wouldn't have without their stool. Um, as well as that, I've, I've bought a trumpet and I've started learning trumpet, which is a new instrument for me because as a music teacher, I believe that I need to be as versatile as I possibly can. My head of music at high school played, I think, 11 instruments, so I hope that one day I can be like that. So after trumpet, you're thinking of even starting a new instrument again? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> not sure. I, I would always have loved to play cello, so maybe that'll be next on the list. <laughs> So Kelly, where do you see yourself then in five years time? 
Well, next year is my third year of my degree, my Bachelor of Music, and after I'm finished my Bachelor of Music, I'd love to go, I'm not sure where yet, but I'd love to go and do a Master's of Education, which is one or two years, and then I will hopefully be teaching in a high school somewhere, classroom music. Have you ever thought about travelling overseas with your music career? I actually went to New York this year, and even with the um, money that the scholarship provided me, I was able to see, I used it for two Broadway shows that I saw, which with my musically directing, it, definitely has improved that and seeing how different things work, especially in different countries. So I'd love to go back to America and anywhere else, but I, I just want to get head, over, head straight head into teaching because I just love working with kids. I was just going to ask you about your work with kids because you said before that you are currently working with children. Do you find that quite difficult in terms of um, being an authority figure? I think I did at first, especially coming up from being in their position, but now that I've sort of got used to it and I'm also, um, my part-time job is teaching piano and voice, so I teach that individually and um, I think, but you've got to find that really, that, that nice level in between of respect but fun and then they sort of get to know you and it's a bit different when you're doing theatre as well because it's a bit more on a personal level, but I, I feel like I've gotten used to the authority figure thing, but I, yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah, excellent. I hear you've got an original for us today. You've brought your guitar in. Yep. Would you like to give us a tune? Yeah, no worries. It's called Changes. Once upon a time, days of happy ever after, childhood fun, games, friends, family and laughter. That little boy on the playground with freckles and red hair chased you around the whole schoolyard and tried to kiss you on the stair. Everything changes with memories burning, but the earth keeps turning around and around. It changes, even if you try, you'll never figure out why. These changes make us who we are. good or bad and if you disappear will I be happy or sad you said forever that you'd always be there now everything's changing I'm wishing you were there everything changes with memories burning but the earth keeps turning around and around it changes even if you try You'll never figure out why These changes make us who we are The ones you know become ones you knew Even though you promised you'd see them through and if you ever see that face again, they look at you blankly thinking so much for best friend, best friend, girlfriend, boyfriend, overrated, to find this meaning for me. Cause everything changes with memories burning, but the earth keeps turning around and around. It changes, even if you try, you'll never figure out why. These changes make us who we are. Everything changes with memories burning, but the earth keeps turning around and around. It changes, even if you try, you'll never
Joining us today on Freemasons Inside Story is Ted and Dean Paulin. Ted and Dean, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, you very ben. much. Ted, uh, tell us about your involvement with sport and more especially the running fraternity. Well, my involvement with sport early was in football. I played with Port Melbourne Thirds under Tom Life, a very famous name. And then I went to the Sunday League uh, and I won a couple of best and fairest in the Sunday League. Then went to Box Hill, played some games with Box Hill. And uh, then I went to the Port Melbourne Colts, which I was captain of the Port Colts. And uh, so I was into football, but my brother-in-law said, let's do a bit of running to get fit for the football season. And that's how I started running. And I was 26 at that stage, 27. And uh, I started running and uh, started sprinting, but couldn't quite get the extra yards in the sprinting. So um, I started to do a cross country running under a coach, John Hurst, very famous name in pro running. And uh, he said to me, have a go at this race. And it was a, a really big race and I won the race. And he said to me, I can win store with you. So I, I gave everything else up, football, golf, whatever I was doing, and I concentrated on the running and uh, I won the two mile at Stall that year. Running's been a special part of your life. Uh, tell us some of the people that you've met around the world and some of the things you've been involved with with running around the world. Well, I've met some very, some very famous people around the world and uh, lots of leading sportsmen and uh, sportswomen some of the best in the world because at some of the races that I've been to, the big marathons, they've all been there competing. And when I joined AIMS, that's the Association of International Marathons and, and Road Races, it just gave me the opportunity to meet with these, these big names and big people. And particularly after the races when they had their functions, all these leading runners were there. And uh, names are just so many of them, you know, it's, it's hard to remember them all. Ted, you were the Senior Vice President for Ames. Tell us about your involvement with Ames. Well, I went to the initial meeting, which was in London in 1982, where Ames was formed, and it started after the New York Marathon, which opened the doors to community running, where anyone could run. And I think marathon running, where Anyone can run and you can run with the champions. There's no other sport you can do that. You can't compete with the champions. In marathon running, you can. And uh, it was for Melbourne. I was the director of the Melbourne Marathon. I became, we became a member of Ames and I was elected onto the board of directors and for 15 years. But I think the highlight was being senior vice president. It was important, it's pretty special to me. But I, and I was chairman of the technical committee, which was responsible for course measurement because as the money came into the sport, the races wanted the fastest time, which attracted the runners, the media, the publicity, and the money. So, uh, you know, the, it, it certainly, there was big expansion in the running around the world at that time. We're also very lucky to have Dean with us, the CEO of Little Athletics Victoria. Dean, welcome. Thank you. Dean, tell us about your story with running. The apple hasn't fallen far from the tree. How did it all evolve for you? Uh, I guess as a, young kid I followed dad around the professional running circuit and you know really loved it as well. Uh, as a seven year old I joined Little Athletics at Doncaster uh, and dad was you know heavily involved in administration of the club I was involved with at the time. I was reasonably successful uh, from there I went on to senior athletics at Doncaster Athletic Club as well. I uh, also ran for Kerry Grammar in Associated Public School Sports so, you know, right through from a young age into my early 20s, I guess, I was uh, you know, heavily involved and fortunate enough to represent my country at the World Cross Country and also at the World Cup. Um, and, you know, here I am today as CEO of Little Athletics, so I'm really lucky that, you know, I'm involved in a, a job that I enjoy and I've done all my life, basically. And, and being CEO, you've, you've probably heard of some names that have come through the ranks and now representing Australia. What's some of the highlights of being uh, working with Little Athletics Victoria? Uh, well, it's fantastic, you know, for our sport, Little Athletics, because you see the likes of uh, Steve Hooker, who was involved at Box Hill Little Athletics, and he's gone on to be an Olympic gold medalist. Uh, probably our most famous athlete right now is Sally Pearson, and she did Little Athletics in Queensland and has worked her way through to being an Olympic champion as well. So. I guess the beauty of Little Athletics is, you know, we've got over 20,000 kids in Victoria and 100,000 nationally, and it's not just for the elite, it's really social as well. 
Um, it, it's a sport that gives kids life skills and you know friends for life basically. It caters for personal bests and family involvement and fun and fitness but you know there is that element that it's going to generate Olympic champions at the end of the day so it's something for everyone. Tell us about some of the stories with running. Um, I believe there's, there's a run that you haven't been beaten at yet by your son Ted. The marathon. <laughs> well Dean has run a marathon. I was fortunate that uh, I won the Australian Professional Marathon Championship seven times so I became known as a bit of a marathon runner. But Dean was a 1500 metre runner and he decided and he was talked into it by his coach to run the Melbourne Marathon. And uh, from the very start he had my time in mind he was going to beat my time. So the race started and Dean's well on the way to breaking my time quite easily. But towards the latter part of the race he, he started to feel the race and slowed down and uh, when he got to the finish line I was standing there and I just gave him a little shake of the head. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he knew what I was meaning. Didn't quite make it, just a 40 seconds or so outside my time. You're probably happy to let that one pass, Dean? Yeah, that was his preferred event and he's pretty good at it. I think the, that race more for me was just to be able to say at the end of the day that I'd done a marathon and yeah, it's a pretty tough gig compared to you know three and three quarter laps around the track. So I was happy to finish at the end of it and he's got one up on me, I guess. We wouldn't have you both here if, if you didn't have a Freemasons connection. Um, can you tell us about both your connections to Freemasonry and, and how Freemasonry may have helped you both professionally? Well, I became a Freemason when I was 18. I was a Lewis and I joined the Caxton Lodge, which was in Albert Road, South Melbourne. And uh, my father was a Freemason and became a 50-year Freemason. And I remember the night I was initiated, there were four of us went through together and it was a really big night. I quite enjoyed my Freemasonry and it wasn't until later on that uh, because I was busy with my running as, as Dean is with his at the moment, uh, someone said to me, would you like to take this office and it was the time to ask me and I went on and became master of the Caxton Lodge of Loyalty. Uh, I then, that lodge folded and I joined Lyardet Lodge in Port Melbourne and I went down there because my father lived nearby and and I picked him up every night and took him to his to our lodge meeting. Uh, when Lyard had folded, I went to Liberation. And uh, I mean, I love my lodge at Liberation. It's a great lodge, great history. And I'm the DC there at the moment. And that led me to, uh, I was a member of the Grand Lodge team in 2006-7. Thoroughly enjoyed my year with, with the Grand Lodge team. And, uh, and I'm, I'm actively involved and I love my Freemasonry. Uh, it was a great night when Dean was initiated because the, uh, we, we brought along, I invited along the deputy grand Ma or a deputy grandmaster uh, who, he was a doctor, Dr. George Bearham, and he was my wife's gynaecologist and he brought Dean into the world. So he was there on that night. Uh, it, was, it was a great night when, when Dean was initiated into Freemasonry. We had three generations there in, in, the, in Freemasonry. I'm now a 50 year plus Freemason and Dean I think has got 25 years up so we are involved and I think we're both proud to be Freemasons. Dean it must be special going to lodge with your dad. Yeah definitely um, you know followed a similar path to dad in that I joined as a Lewis and went through Caxton and Lyardet and I'm now at Liberation as well. Um, you know the beauty about Freemasonry and being involved in various roles and teams and things is again it gives you life skills like there's things that I can take from Freemasonry and public speaking and you know just uh, the various things that you do within Freemasonry that are just fantastic for general life and you know I love being a part of it with dad and the roles that I've done I've done the deacons roles and um, junior and senior warden uh, to this point I haven't been a master but I'll certainly have aspirations to do that later in life and yeah I love being involved it's really great. Thanks for joining us. To find out more about Freemasonry visit the Freemasons Victoria website at www.freemasonsvic.net.au or phone us on 1800 Freemason. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, LinkedIn and Google+. Next week on Freemasons The Inside Story we meet new Deputy Grandmaster Don Reynolds. See you then. Thank you.